We did it, YouTube family. We did it. Oh man, what a run. 20 miles in the ice and snow. Uh, all right, so remember a couple days ago, I said this about the Asics Glide Ride. Really enjoying the shoe. It is uh, firm though. And I think it's gonna open up a little bit when I, as I put more, I'm guessing after like 50 miles, the midsole should start to just be a little more nimble. And frankly, before I run in this, which I don't know when I'll run in it next, but I'm just gonna work the midsole a little bit. Usually, just like with my hands, just kind of break it down a little bit because the midsole is a little, it's intense, but it feels, it, it's a heavy shoe, but it's feeling poppy and uh, poppy, snappy. So the shoes were just feeling a little stiff, a little rigid. Uh, so therefore, what I did last night, I put the shoes on the heater all night long, right down there actually, here in the kitchen. And just to, again, warm that, uh, that warm the midsole up a little bit so it's a little more nimble. Sure enough, the shoes did really, really well today in the ice and snow. And in addition, I put Spenco, so you guys know how much I love Spenco, just a little extra added cushion. And uh, I don't know, I enjoyed the 20 miles today in the Asics Glide Ride much more so than two days ago. So, so far, so good. I think I'm gonna, in this Houston Marathon training block, which I'm gonna get you the details about here in a little bit. And just like that, it's nine hours later from the last clip I filmed. So the days march on quickly sometimes. You know how it is out there. All right, let's move move these Innovate Mud Claws over to the rack, put up the Asics Glide Rides. I think I already mentioned today, two hour plus run and then some. That is for sure, solid day out on the ice and snow. I did not fall, so that's a good thing. And uh, I, I was close a couple times. And I was trying to find this gentleman's name. So today's topic about marathon volume. I'm gonna do my best to connect it to all of you because I realize like I talk a lot, I share as much of my experience with all of you as possible, but at the end of the day, I wanna help you. So that is the goal of tonight's vlog, talking here in the studio, but um, I realize that we're all at different ability levels, okay? It's like so crazy. The, you know, people that are, have been running for three months, literally are just, just getting into the sport. And some people who have been running for 40 plus years, 50 plus years. So there's a lot of diversity out there with respect to experience in this incredible sport. And so the, the topic for the vlog today is a direct shout out to someone on Strava. I could not find the comment again. It was from a run about three days ago. He basically asked in the comments on Strava, Seth, I hope you make a vlog about your training block, the specific details about your training block leading into Houston. So here you go. I'm going to communicate as I'm going to lay it all out for you. My volume, my workouts that I plan to do. And uh, there we go. Okay. So quick review. October 20th, Amsterdam Marathon. Feels like a lifetime ago. I can't even believe. Yeah, what is today? It's been, it was basically five weeks ago. It feels like months and months ago. But October 20th, Amsterdam Marathon. November 3rd or 4th, New York City Marathon. Okay, back to back there. And then the World Mountain Running Championships. Uh, and then I took a week off, okay? And I'm not even back. I think tomorrow will be seven days back, maybe six days back uh, into running. And I fully realize that I am not fully recovered from those two marathons. I don't care what I tell myself mentally or how my body feels. I feel pretty good, actually. But I know that uh, you just don't go do that. And I don't want to be that guy long term who does like marathons like four or five times a year. Twice a year would be perfect. Maybe three like down the road. Anyway. 2020, the goal, well, I shouldn't, I gotta be careful what I say, but bottom line, you just don't go do that. And at least I'm not doing CIM, right? That would be, what is it this week? It's like two weeks from now. So I'm not doing CIM. Let's just lay out the timeline for you. From the moment I started running last Saturday, I had, I had eight weeks to go until Houston. Uh, January 19th, 2020, Houston. It's a Sunday. We're going to do a group run in Houston. Don't you worry. It's going to be fun. I don't know where. In fact, if you have ideas on where to do a group run that is close to the starting area, is there a park? Let me know via email. That'd be amazing. Okay, so eight weeks to go. Here's my layout for volume. And um, again, when I communicate my volume to you, 
I just want you to keep in mind that, um, okay, actually, before I tell you volume, real quick, I just remembered, um, I think it's really healthy and important before you dive into marathon training, and more importantly, before you register for a marathon, to go inward into your uh, personality and introspectively um, just kind of think to ask yourself this question. Do I enjoy going out for two and a half or three and a half hour long runs on not a consistent basis, but at least two or three times leading into a marathon? Because I'm a big believer, you all know, actually, let's just say right now, uh, toss, I'll, I'll toss it back to, I really believe in building your aerobic engine first. The cardiac efficiency of our hearts. So our hearts, believe it or not, you know, it can expand and get bigger with more training. And that can impact uh, basically the power of the contraction of the heart, which means you can pump more blood into your system, your, I guess, your pulmonary system. And that allows us to carry more oxygen, or sorry, more blood through our bloodstream and therefore more oxygen. In addition, and yes, there you go, Aerobic Engine, you remember that vlog? A lot of people have watched it and I'm a big believer in the two plus hour training run. There's so many benefits, it's insane, but to the steady state aerobic training is that at longer intervals, uh, it improves our pulmonary ventilation. The lungs become more efficient because they develop more active pulmonary capillary beds. You've heard me talk about that before, which enables our blood to absorb oxygen faster and more easily. So for me, I don't know if you remember the question of the day, but I asked it, like, would you rather train for the rest of your life or race for the rest of your life? This is like three months ago. And I must say, I love training. In fact, I missed it over the past five, six weeks going into Amsterdam, the taper into Amsterdam, and I've just missed I've missed the higher volume. There's no other way to say it. I like the miles. I like the volume, but it's not for everyone, and that's okay. But, and this is the mental side of marathon prep, that might be a little sign that you should hone in on the half marathon, hone in on a 10 mile or 10K for a little bit, and maybe you'll get that itch to go out and do the two and a half to three and a half hour long runs on your weekends. But again, it's um it's an and it's an inward it's an inward in um reflection that we all have to go through as runners. And one last point I forgot to mention, I just happen to enjoy that solitude. But I get it, like some people and like listen, I don't train in a in a training group, but some people need to go on long runs with a group and that's totally cool. I just don't, um, I've never really been that type of personality. And that and that's good for me to know, and it's good for you to know, uh, maybe I need that group. Maybe not a huge group, but maybe two or three other runners to go train with on a consistent basis. Okay, now the volume I'm about, I'm about to share with you, it um, it might shock you a little bit, but just, just so you know, I trained at 100 miles a week consistently in college. So this is 10 years ago. And then over the past five years, I've dabbled in 90 to 120, even 125 mile weeks with big vertical. We're talking five to 10,000 feet of vertical in a week on a, not on a regular basis, but I've been there into that range of training. I think at least, I was trying to think, we, I definitely was hitting it going into Run Rabbit Run 100 last year, the 100 mile race. Um, I think I've hit it three times in the past, let's say four and a half to five years. So this volume is not um, totally new to me. In fact, I wouldn't be doing this uh, going into Houston if it was totally new to me. So here we go. Let's count it out. This is week one, 100 miles. Okay, this week I'll hit 100 miles. Week two, 110. Week three, 120 miles. And there it is on kilometers in kilometers on your screen. Uh, week four, 120. Week five, 120. And keep in mind, I, every single day, in addition to every single week, I will be listening to the body and I'll either reduce, I won't go over 120, but I'll, I'll reduce the volume if I need to. Okay, so there you go. Week five, week six, um, what, oh, what is, okay, I have it written down. Week six, 85 to 90. Week seven, 65 to 75. Week eight, race week. Boom, it's that quick. That's how quick Houston is coming up. So that is why I personally prefer to hone in on nice, solid aerobic fitness 
um, before anything else. Now, this is where it gets extra exciting. So, okay, one last point on the volume. Sorry if I'm jumping around a little bit. If I was training to try and break three hours, let's say I'm in the 35 to 50 age range, and I was trying to break three, three hours or was trying to chase down a Boston qualifier, I think 70 to 85 miles a week is like, mm, you don't need to run 100. You don't need to run 120, definitely not. Um, I think 70 though is like a minimum. And I don't think you need to go over 85. I really don't. Uh, if you really, 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 really want to track down those PRs and those Boston qualifiers. Um, anyway, that's just based on my experience and doing quite a bit of reading um, uh, of other people's success stories, especially I'm thinking about the BQs out there. Uh, okay, moving on to workouts. Here we go, specific workouts. So what are my weaknesses uh, that I have learned from Amsterdam and New York? Pacing, all right, need to work on pacing. I'm gonna say for the ease of conversation over the next eight weeks, I'm gonna say 5.15 a mile, not 5.20, because actually 5.20 a mile doesn't get the job done for sub 219. It's literally 5.18 a mile. So for my sake, I'm gonna say 5.15 a mile. 5.15 a mile. So I need to work on that pacing. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, I need to work on oh, maintaining my form and not falling apart the last, let's say, three to six miles. So Amsterdam, it happened early because of the, the going out too fast. New York, it happened probably because probably I was just tired. Um, but it really didn't happen in New York until about mile 24, 23 to 24, where I started to uh, tighten up a little bit and I just was losing steam and sure enough faded there toward the end. Therefore, here's my uh, workouts that I am going to do over the next eight weeks. This is not a complete list quite yet, but it's I'm really honing in. So here we go. A warm up, 10 mile tempo run, which for me is about 550 to six minutes a mile, followed by a three, two, one cut down workout. So three miles, so I'll do a 10 mile tempo. And what's the idea here? The idea is to make my legs tired, to mimic the end of a race. So let's say by mile 20, um, your legs start getting tired in a marathon, but then I'll stop the tempo, rest for two minutes, maybe three minutes, and I'll start a three mile, 520 a mile pace, okay? And then I'll stop, so uh, stop for 90 to two minutes, 90 seconds to two minutes, and then do a two mile, and then rest, and then a one mile, and then rest, and then cool down. So the idea is to work on pacing with tired legs, okay? Does that make sense? Also, I will definitely continue the threshold workouts. I really do, I love them. They give me confidence. Again, back to that mental side. So I'll do a nine mile threshold and once again, a 13 mile threshold. And lastly, the 12 by 1K workout once again with 90 seconds rest, but this time I will do it in Denver at 5,280 feet rather than in Leadville at 10,200 feet. All right, so we're gonna, the idea, everyone, is to, so leading into Amsterdam, and we're almost done, this is important though, leading into Amsterdam, I was running 100 to 115 miles a week approximately with three to six, three to 7,000 feet of vertical gain because I was still getting up into the mountains. So now, I'm going to say no to the mountains for a little bit more, actually for a long time until next spring, and then replace that vertical with a little more snappy work, okay? Um, with form drills, with uh, some plyometrics, with getting into the gym, of course, um, and then even just being able to keep my tempo days at just a nice, brisk, relaxed pace. Because I'm hoping my legs are not going to be as tired because I'm not going and getting that vertical gain and loss on a weekly basis. All right, there you go. I love you all. That's it. I hope that helps you understand. And again, thank you to the gentleman who asked on Strava for, hopefully that was detailed enough. Um, I'm just trying to be transparent and open with all of you. That's how I'm going to train. And um, again, I'm a little bit of a mad scientist right now trying to figure out this whole marath road marathon business because I've, you know, it's I've been doing ultra marathons for a long time, 
but it's time to figure out this road marathon business and just dialing it in. But this will be my third marathon in a short amount of time, so it, it's an opportunity to learn and hopefully pass that on to all of you. Question of the day, here we go. What is your mental approach to volume of training? How do you go, how, how do, are you scared of it? Are you, do you, do you, do you relish it? Um, does it make you anxious? Do you, do the miles pass by like, like that? Like literally like, like, like you could go do 18 to 22 miles like that. And you don't even know like in a blink of an eye. So what is like your mental approach to volume of training? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll stop there. Take it where you will. Take it where you will, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. That's it from the studio. Glide rides. Everything's good. Love you all. Oh, my goodness. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans and everybody else, too, I guess. You know, happy Thanksgiving. All right, everyone. You better believe. What's my favorite? <laughs> oh, pumpkin pie. You are going down. You're going down. All right, everyone. We're tossing it back to some marathon workouts leading into Amsterdam. We'll go with a threshold run and the two hour plus. We'll go a threshold on the right, two hour plus on the left. There you go. Take beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.